Okay, so in this video, we will find all values of x for which the following power series converges. Therefore, finding the domain of this function. Now, we can usually use, in the case of a power series, the ratio or the root test. But here, because there is a factorial, we should not use the root test, but instead the ratio test. And notice here, because we simply have an x to the n, x is really x minus 0, and so the center of the power series is 0. So this is a n, the sequence of terms we are summing over, and now we will apply the ratio test to try and figure out for which values of x the given power series converges. So, to obtain a n plus 1, replacing the subscript n by n plus 1 gives us the term x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial. We divide by a n, therefore we multiply by the reciprocal n factorial over x to the n. Now, let me do one thing with the n plus 1 factorial, and then we'll simplify n plus 1 factorial, being the product of the first n plus 1 positive integers, is n plus 1 times n all the way down to 1. So if we factor out the n plus 1, this leaves the product n times n minus 1 all the way down to 1, which is of course n factorial. And so what we have now will be, as we're about to find out, a very simple limit n factorial over itself cancels. x to the n plus 1 over x to the n is simply x. So, we are left with x, of course, an absolute value, as x could be negative, over n plus 1. We do not need the absolute value in n plus 1, as it is clearly positive. And now think of why this is a rather trivial limit. x is some fixed real number, but no matter the value of x, what we have here is a constant over n plus 1. And as n tends to infinity, n plus 1 tends to infinity, so we have a constant over something which blows up to infinity, therefore the limit is 0. <coughs> Sorry. But what's interesting here is that the limit of the ratio test is 0 regardless of the value of x. So this is 0 which is obviously strictly less than 1, for all values of x. And so we're done. We were asking to find all values of x for which the power series converges, and the answer is, no matter what value of x we choose, the ratio test returns a limit of 0, which is strictly less than 1. So the power series converges absolutely for all values of x. So we can visualize this, and then we'll ask, well, what is there in the radius of convergence and the interval of convergence? The center of the power series is 0. Now let's think about the radius of convergence. The radius of convergence is how far you can walk away from the center of the power series and still have convergence. Well, as the series converges for all values of x, we can walk as far as we want in both directions, and we will always have convergence. So, since we can walk away as far as we want in either direction and always have convergence, the radius of convergence is infinity. And if you think about it, well, what is therefore the interval of convergence? Well, the interval of convergence contains all values of x for which the power series converges. 
but as the power series converges for all values of x, i is simply the real line, or if you prefer, the interval from negative to positive infinity. So this really is, in a sense, a dream power series. This is a function whose domain is the entire real line, because this power series converges for all values of x. And this is our conclusion. And of course, not only converges, but absolutely because of the ratio test. And we're done. But I want to leave you with a teaser. So this is really a dream power series as it converges for all values of x. So infinite radius of convergence. The whole real line is the interval of convergence. So this is a function on the entire real line. And what is far from trivial at this point, but we will prove this later, is not only is this a function on the entire real line, it is a very special function. So let me rewrite the series and expand on the first few terms to give you a feeling of what the terms look like. So when n equals 0, x to the 0 is 1, 0 factorial is 1, so we will have 1 plus when n is 1, x to the 1 is x over 1 factorial, which is 1. And then, when n is 2, x squared over 2 factorial, plus when n is 3, x cubed over 3 factorial, plus when x n is 4, x 4 over 4 factorial, and so forth. So we have just proved, with the help of the ratio test, that this power series converges for all values of x, and not only is this power series a function on the entire real line, this series is actually equal to, for all values of x, 2e to the x, the natural exponential function. This, at this point, of course, is far from obvious. But now, if you want, with your calculator, do a numerical experiment, well, you could use the power series to approximate e. If you want to approximate e, of course, you pick x to be 1. So you will get, well, if you replace x by 1, 1 to any power is simply 1. And you will have that e is the infinite series 1 plus 1, plus 1 over 2 factorial plus 1 over 3 factorial, plus 1 over 4 factorial, and so forth. The more of these terms you add, the better your approximation will be to the number e. So try this out with your calculator. You can go up to, say, 1 over 15 factorial, and you will have a very good approximation to e. And as I've said, this is a teaser, as at this point this is far from obvious, but later on in the course we will prove that this is indeed the case.